Okay. And up next, we have Mikhail uh, from Gearbox, who will be talking more about exactly how Gearbox Protocol cooks their oracles. Welcome, Mikhail. Hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for participating. And sorry for my lost voice. I will try to do the best. And today, what I really want to tell about Oh, this is yesterday I was in Louvre and it was a really great picture. How to cook oracles, you can see it here. Paris is a really a country of the art. And what I really want to talk today, how we cook oracles, but because oracles which we will talk today related to things that we use to compute collateral. For simplicity, Gearbox primarily it's a uh, Composable leverage protocol, so we have a very, very big pain and a very, very significant task for us to check that user have enough collateral. And we do not work only with original or, uh, tokens like ES, DAI and USDC. We usually focus on LP tokens as well. And what I really want to present today, it's our practical way how we cook them. So let's start. And why are you talking about? So you can see it's the most real Twitter threads. For example, the first one happened 22 hours ago, maybe 24 today. It's how Conic protocol was hacked. And it's a problem when people build their own LP oracles as a smart contracts, you should think twice which problems could happen. And Gearbox itself, we have 102 25 million in November now, it's lower, but still we are quite secure. And what you told the best security practices, what we have not to be in the Twitter of Peck Shilting or Spreak. So what's the nightmare about Pride Oracles? Why it's so significant for us and why I am not sleep well if I have no proof that oracles work perfectly. You can see a very simple attack. For example, we work with credit accounts, so a potential attacker take 850 die debt and provide 150 die as own funds. So what we have at the account, we have some token A and we have 1,000 die, which we really believe could be used as 1,000 of collateral. Then if someone could pump token A price, it's a pretty simple to swap DAI to token A, which is one to one. And if the price is two, it's quite easier to fool the system and take 500 DAI. So basically you can see on the last slide how attack happens. You can see 500 DAI was withdrawn and the profit is 350. Of course, it's just relative numbers. Of course, they could be much bigger for real case, but it's how it works, this price oracle attack. You pump the price, you fool the system that you have more collateral and you withdraw real money. And we have like a singleton contract which calls price oracle. And it's a very, very simple way. So you have a token, you call get price, and you get a USD price value as a result. And now let's play a game because you can see it's quite simple. We use a Chainlink aggregator v3 interface which is the latest one for Chainlink. We take latest round data and then we get a price. <clears throat> so what do you think about? Could we trust that this part should be work correctly? Because as you know, a lot of people rely on chain link. Yeah, Aave and other big protocols. Or you believe it's not so. Who believes this taking dialect price from chain link is totally safe and we shouldn't go further? Nobody trusts chain link. Okay, cool. I think Sergei Nazarov will be really impressed. Okay, it's true. So we have quite few tests. One was from Risk DAO, who is responsible for Gearbox DAO to making risk. And the reason why we should focus was LUSD price. LUSD has a very low liquidity and it could be really naturally pumped. And as a result, it could be not like one USD, it could be like 1.2, 1.5 
which could really on a scale become not good for us. And you can see this slide from Yaron. He show real example how the price going up and down. And if someone could provide real money to pump on real market the price, it could be disaster. And we built a very simple solution, but it works because many complex problems could be solved with a very simple solution. It's not the best, but it works, yeah? So basically what we do, we have a cap for real stable coin. I think we can agree stable coin could not be 10 and could not be five. Yeah, it's something malicious and we should not take them. So we make a cap and it's like 1.1 or 1.05, I do not remember correctly. And it works, you can see this price, it's going up. And then we use cap value. And it really prevents from different manipulations of LUSD. Because there are some known hacks when you know how people could do that. And there are some unknown hacks. We want to really be safe for these unknown things. Another interesting example, we have a really problem with getting STEs and E's price. And one person was liquidated and it was like 17 E's liquidation premium. And this person who lost 17 E's was not happy, to be honest. Yeah, because he really have a strategy which could not be breaking, broken at any point. And what happens here? Let's check. We use USD oracles, correct? We have E's on the first block you can see, and we have STEs. And this day it was not, uh, it was before P, uh, proof of stake. So STS premium was around two person. So let's assume that E's for simplicity cost that cost two thousand and STS cost 1960. At this point, everything is good. But then we get update for ETHUSD and the price is pumped up. And you can see, despite Chainlink said that it's like a two person update, it could be five and 10, we make like a data analytics. And in this case, you can see a big gap. So the depth which this guy has an ETH was pumped and the collateral value was not updated. And the problem here is that he was liquidated, he lost money, and we could not really understand who is responsible for that because we definitely believe that this approach, we take only USD prices from Chainlink works well, but STEs in this unsynced, and at this moment, it could be a big deviation. So basically, if you're interested in QR code to my GitHub repo, we make a data analytics and we found that in Eight blocks, it was more than 5% deviation between ETH price and ETHs, which should be. So how we solve that? It's a pretty simple. We built a composite oracle. Oh, I think it's missed some formula. But you can see the code here. So we first time take a ETH price in USD, then we take, uh, take the chain oracle price of STEs to ETH, and we compute price. And now they are synced. Now it could not be a big gap between them, which could be very good. The next interesting point is how to build, as I already mentioned, some, uh, price feed, which based on uh, other smart contracts. For example, very simple way. So we want to understand and evaluate how much could cost your LP token. So we have a underlying price we take from the Chainlink Oracle. Let's assume it's okay at the moment. And we have a price per share which we take directly from Yearn smart contract. So my usual question, could we yearn for this approach? Could we use this receipt? What do you think? Who really believe that this formula, it's a pretty correct and we can implement it as it shown here. Hands up. No one trust. Okay, yeah, good. Because as you can see, it's a quite fun, but basically the answer here is that it's a pretty easy to change price per share. Of course, for Gearbox, this cream attack is not applicable. Yeah, it's a very famous attack, but still we have no clear 
understanding how it could be next time. Yeah, because each things in the smart contract when it works taken on chain could be a problem. And here also a very simple solution which we use here. So we consider two different asymmetric cases. If the price is lower than lower bound, we decided to revert. So this attack vector when someone could reduce the price and liquidate a lot of credit accounts and get a lot of profits as liquidator. And another pri uh, solution, then we just cap the upper price. So if you heard about different things happened with curve read-only reentrancy, it's a quite difficult to check it because primarily in the smart contract language in Solidity, you have a static call to get price. And the problem here then, during this static call, you could not understand that the curve contract is already has a reentrancy flag. It's a private. You could not really understand that your smart contract was called in this receive function from some uh, exploiter attack. And there are two possible solutions. You can rewrite your function and make to get price from price oracle as a normal function which could change the state and it's not a good approach from my point or another part you can also make limits and if you have a very small window around two person it's really economical there is no economic reason to pump for two person and move it down so you can always compute and keep this function read only which is really great for integrations and so on and the last but not least, very good example about how to compute curve stable LP price feed. So basically, one more question. So guys, do you believe? So the initial idea could be like, let's take all balances of this curve LP pool, multiply by prices, we talk from the chain link, and divide by total supply of curve LP token. What do you think? Could we really rely on this approach? So what do you think? Is it a good receipt to make a curve LP oracle? Who believes that it's good? What's wrong? Okay, let's move forward here. Yeah, and this is how to manipulate the price. It's a very simple computation. So basically, let's assume in some case, of course, it's also like relative data just to show how it could happen. But it makes a lot of sense. If we have uh, one stable coin like USDT, which, for example, could be drawn for 10 cents, of course, as I said. So for majority cases, it means that curve pool will be not like 33, 33, 33. It will be really keep only on this USDT. And if you compute the total value, it will be tail alpha. And when we divide to total supply 13, it will be 0 0.95, what you can use. But then I can swap one to another and get 45.5 USDC. And in this case, it's a very, very simple manipulation using flash loan, which could give you four times more. Because you just keep balances. And it's a very big thing that people sometimes think, okay, we can compute how much money on the contract and it's okay. With DEXs and price impact, it could be a really way how to manipulate Oracle, then price Oracle attack happened and then the protocol could be racked. Of course, these barriers also works nice, but the better idea which is which is implemented uh, with us and I think many other protocols, we take minimum price of USDC, USDT and I, and then multiply it by virtual price to get the price a little bit lower. So we do not provide the exact collateral price. Maybe you can compute off-chain, but it's much safer. So this price computed by this formula could be always a little bit less, but it's a pretty nice for our purposes, and it will never give us a chance to be manipulated and get this price attack. So you can see this implementation. And Okay, so we have some collateral. We have maybe 
very good oracles. Is it enough to sleep well or not? What we should really want to check? One point that I really want to mention here is that we should not trust any ideas about the price. And in many cases, people believe that this price is something that we have like in car ex exchange in a bank. Because our first experience, maybe, of course, when crypto becomes like an after mass adoption, that the price exists like you go to the bank and you can find USD to euro price and it works like a one number, yeah? But price is already some aggregated data. And it doesn't mean that you can immediately swap one asset into another using this predator with any liquidity. So to be really ensured that everything works well and you have really ability to not to generate bad debt, you really need to build some price oracle monitoring. And uh, previously I have a big speech about on the DeFi security summit how we built a monitoring system this is like a short explanation of what we built that we should measure not only prices we should understand on any chain how much liquidity we have and if there is a really normal way to make this exchange without this big price impact because the oracle could say hey the price is 10 but if you're going to swap 1 million the price could be 8 and it's why there is no liquidity there. And we monitor at the moment a lot of stuff in the system. So we monitor liquidity, we monitor all boundaries I told before, we monitor all price changes and so on to really not to get news from the Twitter and understand what could be potential. So if you're interested in how we work with risk, you can check this riskgearbox.foundation. And here is a real price, so we continuously use different sources of data to understand that what our protocol has at the moment is really what we can realize in the market. So we compute this chain link price or chain link uh, base generated, I already mentioned in Jordan and so on, and the prices we have as a spot price using price aggregator, because for us, we have only on-chain operations and for example, use one inch to get this price this is a pretty good idea or any other aggregator because you can ask him how to how we can get if you swap one million usdc or so get a real on-chain price and compare with it so basically that's all thanks for your attention any questions